It has been called the most devastating urban wildfire in U.S. history. I'm looking at, you know, full homes, fire burning up close, everything getting preheated and then bursting in the flame all at the same time. Oakland Fire Chief Mark Hoffman, a lieutenant back in 1991, says it was a deadly combination of high winds, low humidity, and heavy fuel load that put him and his men in for the fight of their lives on the ground. It is still burning out of control. It's I watched that battle overhead in Chopper 5. Every one of those orange glows that you're looking at right now is a home on fire. These are houses that will not be saved. Everything on this side burnt. Down below, homeowner Jim Molesky never saw our helicopter through the thick smoke as he grabbed his seven-year-old son, a few photographs, and the clothes on his back. My main concern was getting my son down the hill, uh, getting him out of harm's way, and then I was planning on coming back up. And I remember as we were driving down, the, the flames were sort of keeping pace with us. This was just all grass and wind. And I saw the, the flames coming down in these little fingers in, in, in the little valleys. On the, you know, that, that's when it was like, I was concerned. If you look closely, you can still find remains of the Oakland Hills fire, an old foundation here, a burned out stump over there. Here's what Acacia Avenue and Broadway Terrace looked like after the fire. And here's what that same street looks like today. The 20th anniversary is giving people time to reflect, those who actually lived through the fire, and the newcomers, and over half the people in the hills were not here during the fire, well over half, and it gives them a chance to become aware or oriented to the fact that they're living in an area where there's an ever-present danger.